Welcome back guys, uh, we are talking about virology and in this video we will be looking at the different type of viral DNA. So we will be looking at the types of types of viral DNA or viral genetic material, not actually DNA, viral genetic material. Right? So we will be talking about the virus genetic material. Now what we know is that any viral particle they consist of two important parts. One is the genetic material itself and another one is the protein coat which is uh, protecting the genetic material inside. Now for example if I draw it, if I draw the capsid, so it's a protein coat made up with small subunits of a protein called capsomia. They are arranged together to finally form what you call a protein coat or capsid. Now inside the capsid we can have inside the capsid we are actually having our genetic material. Now the genetic material can be DNA or it could be RNA. Now in this case in this picture we are drawing the double stranded genetic material. So or it can also be it can also be a single stranded genetic material like that anyways right. Now in this picture I have drawn a very very basic structure of this uh, DNA or RNA but actually they are present much more complicatedly inside the virus because if I know that the DNA structure uh, the RNA structure is kindly like that or the DNA structure is kind of helical like that so usually usually inside these viruses they just they just don't be like that right so they are having much more folding and modification and usually you all know that inside the cell they present or they live as as secondary structures secondary or tertiary structures okay now this is much more common for rna rna viruses which are having the rna as genetic material now those rna as we know they, those are simple uh, simple uh, single stranded molecule a uh, nucleic acid molecule like that but they cannot just stay as it is like that because RNA is much more unstable if it uh, leaves like this it can be degraded inside so instead of living just as a single stranded nucleic acid it is having much more fold and twist and turn to finally get the secondary or tertiary structure now what type of structure we can get we can get most of the time we can get a kind of a stem loop structure or we can got a, a pseudo knot or sometimes we get some base complement and all this structure like this pseudo knot structure of single standard RNA or let's say stem loop structure of this RNA uh, this is uh, the res this is resulting from uh, the self complementary nature this is for self complementary self complementary nature of RNA. Now for example in this case, in this case of RNA there are several regions so new bases are coming out and there are certain region of the bases for example for example this is the region of the base this is a kind of complementary with this region this is a kind of complementary of this so due to this kind of complementary nature they are kind of pair with each other and what they result in they usually result in the structure like this structure like this. So once they form this kind of structure if I draw the bases coming out like that and rest of the bases kind of having a bond formation between themselves like that. So this and here there is no bond so we can have a stem. So this kind of structure is a called a stem loop structure. A stem loop structure of uh, RNA. And this kind of structure is pretty common as the secondary structure of RNA. Uh, because they are single stranded uh, molecules. Now this can also be seen in case of single stranded DNA molecule containing viruses also, right? Um, but this kind of thing is common. And also we can find another kind of structure, let's say we can find the structure like that. If we, if we have, we can find structure like this. So this is, this is, sorry. This is a kind of very very common structure in indeed, like that. Okay, so here are what we can say here are uh, so these structures are really complex until unless you draw them, you don't know how they are forming actually. They are forming this complement due to this complementary nature. They are forming the structures like pseudo knot or li like the stem loop structure and many more many different kinds of structure. Let me draw another type of structure for you. Another structure can be like this. Here is again complementarity and again like that. 
here it's some complementarity here it is some complementarity so structures like that it is it is pretty common in all the rna structures this is pseudo knot so the structures like stem loop structure or pseudo knot is found inside the uh, viral genome particle or, or as a viral genome particle for the RNA containing viruses. Now for the DNA containing viruses where we are having double stranded material like this one. When we are having double stranded material, this is single strand. When we are having double stranded DNA or double stranded RNA whatever, this is also being modified. Now the modification for the double stranded nucleic acid material is slightly different. Now usually inside this uh, viral particle, we never find uh, this nucleic acid material as its own. Like for example, if it is the DNA, usually this DNA is attached or integrated with some other kind of macromolecules. Now sometimes we find uh, the DNA attached with protein. DNA attached with protein molecules. Protein molecules in both the ends. So sometimes we find this protein attachment in both the ends. Sometimes we find only at one end. So if I draw the DNA structure here in this case, so let me draw the structure here. Say this is a DNA structure uh, like this. This is another strand of the DNA like that. So if this is the DNA structure, there is some there are some protein molecules that that usually come and attached there this terminal and it is here at this terminal so this is a kind of structure that we can find these are proteins and this is a DNA this kind of attachment is found often okay an example for finding this kind of attachment is adenovirus if you look for adenovirus you can find this kind of structure It's pretty common now let us talk about another mode of this structure. Sometimes we also find this double stranded DNA materials to be circular inside, to be coiled inside instead of having linear structure. So, but it is linear, right? Instead of having linear structure, we sometimes can have circular structure. So this DNA molecule is kind of circularized among itself. So if I draw this circular structure here, how it looks like? Let me draw it. Let's say here it is like that. And there is another strand. And let's say another strand. Uh, so let me draw another strand like that. The different color. Here it goes like that. And at the end of this another strand. At the end of this another strand. There is a terminal tRNA kind of structure at this end. Right? This is a very very unique. This is a tRNA like structure at the end of one strand of the DNA and this structure is important to hold the DNA structure together and also it, it sometimes it also is having a protein at this end. So it can uh, attach to it. So it's, it's a protein at the end. Right? So what we can see that this DNA can have proteins attached here we can see in case of adenovirus, DNA has protein attached in both the ends. Sometimes we can have protein attached in one end. For example, if this is the single stranded DNA, it can have a protein molecule attached to one end of it. Right? So this kind of example is pretty common for, uh, for parvovirid or parvovirus. But this kind of structure which is having a circular DNA molecule formation due to the attachment of tRNA at one end of a strand of the DNA and a protein molecule at a strand of uh, another, uh, another strand of the DNA. Right? So it's a kind of tRNA capping. A capping is, she, uh, is seen in this case. right? And this is pretty common in case of hepatitis, hepatitis B virus. It's pretty common for hepatitis B virus. So that's how this kind of structure is shown in all these cases. Okay. So the genome of virus is not very simple as we thought, but it's it's having different kind of arrangement. Like uh, if it is RNA, it is having secondary structure arrangement, and if it is a DNA, it can have attached with uh, proteins or other molecules. Okay. So that's it, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.
one thing I forgot to mention is that there are some more structures that are also common and remember in eukaryotic system the eukaryotic RNA is uh, modified right after the synthesis of the RNA it is getting modified and this modification of RNA occurs in two ways one is at the 5 prime end another one is at the 3 prime end now the 5 prime end modification is by uh, the capping right so methylation or capping is done and often 3 prime end of this uh, RNA of eukaryotic RNA there are polyadenyl tail is added in case of some viruses also we can find this kind of polyadenylation at the 3 prime end and also we can find some kind of methylated cap at the 5 prime end so what are those so, le so let me let me draw some of the examples so if we look at those uh, those RNAs so if you look at those RNAs it can have a structure like that let's say this is the RNA and at the end of it we can have a kind of methylated cap so let's say this is a methylated cap methylated cap at the 5 prime end so if, if, if I draw it is 5 it is 3 prime so we can find this kind of methylated cap at the 5 prime end right and this is common like uh, we can find this is some uh, uh, black beetle virus if we write the example it is black beetle virus is the example for that we can also ha we can sometimes have a uh, we can sometimes have polyadenylation uh, going so you can have uh, the d this this virus rna and at the end of this virus rna we can have a polyadenine tail so we can have a polyadenine tail like that and also we can have some proteins attached to one end like that so this is a protein this is polyadenine tail this kind of feature is common and the example for this kind of virus are polio virus very common polio virus so this is a protein a general kind of protein that we can find like that okay and sometimes we can find both these modifications that five prime, uh, prime capping and polyadenylation both of these modifications in same rna and if we look at the example for those kind we can have here like like this this capping as well as we can have this polyadenylation right going on like that so this kind of modification is common and this can be uh, provide or, or can be seen in case of SARS coronavirus SARS coronavirus which is a causative agent for the disease SARS right so it's again capping here and polyadenylation at the 3 prime end just like the modifi modified uh, RNA seen in case of eukaryotic system so viruses are very much modified in this case so viral genome are versatile they are modified in several different ways and why are these modifications why are they modified now the modification is definitely helping them in the future time to spread the infections we are going to see all of these things in detail in the future videos and that's it thank you